Hey guys, in this video I want to share some thoughts behind the making of silt. This piece, silt, hinges on the idea of permutation, and I'll give an explanation of two approaches I used. I'm working on figuring out ways to write and perform electronic music without using pre-recorded tracks. I'm not against using tracks, I just keep wondering if there's a way that we could rethink how we write so performing music using electronics is more engaging. One obvious way to extend our sound beyond what two hands can do is to utilize looping. This is super common, and Ableton Live and the OP1 are great tools that I use for that. But it's repetitive. It gets stale if you don't do something to change it before long. I thought about how loops of different lengths will permutate. They'll line up differently as they repeat at different times. So I decided to write this piece as an experiment to exploit that concept. Here's the chord progression I used on this song. I could loop this on the piano and it would keep going on unchanged. When I recorded this, I split up the progression into two loops, each loop playing every other chord. The first loop ends up being 10 measures long, and the second loop is 8. With these loops repeating at different times, you end up with a much larger chord progression that doesn't repeat itself for 40 measures. You can see how they line up with these faint lines here. It only gets around the full progression one and a half times in this whole piece. A little extreme, but whatever. Another method of permutation I used in this piece was on the OP1 and the keyboard. The keyboard is sending MIDI through an arpeggiator in Ableton, and I'm sending that MIDI information into the OP1 while it's running its own sequence. I'm using the FM engine on the OP1, and I'm using an LFO to slowly affect the blue knob. The blue knob in the FM engine acts to open up the sound, introduce brighter harmonics, and make the sound more growly. The sequence is 24 quarter notes on the OP1, essentially a random series of C's and low and high octaves. The incoming arpeggiated MIDI transposes the OP1 sequence every measure, which is 4 beats since we're in 4-4 time. Constructing a sequence in two separate parts like this allows it to morph into something that could go for very long without repeating. I took the approach of considering the OP1 sequence to just be the rhythm of the sequence, and the arpeggiation from the keyboard to be the notes, which is a lot simpler than trying to sequence out that result. This is a really fun trick to try with the OP1's other sequencers too, especially the tombola. Using these two methods of permutation at the same time made for a really fun experiment to capture and play with and react to. If I was a super genius, I could have tailored these permutations to have all awesome variations that sound amazing together. For me, this is a method worth pursuing because I end up with results I could not have foreseen. I chose the chords and notes, but I just have to let it run its course to see what happens. I was really happy with how this turned out. I'm looking forward to trying it again, perhaps in another context or with yet another permutation method. A quick note on how I recorded this. I went for ultimate simplicity as far as miking this setup. I used an X15 placed like this. It's a stereo figure 8, so it captures sound in front and behind it. It's much closer to the piano than the drums, so that the drums don't overpower the piano. Even so, I had to play very, very softly, which is what inspired using a mallet and a tiny cymbal. I've used more mics when attempting this live recording thing before, but it gets complicated. If it's possible to use less mics and still capture the performance well, I'd say go that route. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And thank you so much for supporting me here on Patreon. If you have any questions, you can shoot me a message anytime. Also, if you have any requests for future tutorials, let me know and I'll explore those areas in the near future. Thanks!